What's up everyone, Matt here. I was just reviewing some activity in the community on the thread that I'm following. Uh, so this is about the ability to hide the new button for inline views. So if I would just go to an app here, this is the order capture, order capture sample app. We have a list of orders here, uh, and then there's a child record um, for order details, and there's the add button here. Um, so the original thread was the ability to m more easily hide this and after some talk there's yes you can you've got to do some work um, some people have asked some questions about how can you do it um, so David Joyce had asked um, that he had said that basically I want to be able to add records to the child table only if the parent record has the active status otherwise the new button should not appear it should go away um, and the general the general answer is as Alexi said here it's not possible on the row level um, and so David Joyce had done a workaround where uh, if I go inside here he had done a workaround where he put a validation inside the form here in the order detail form where it would be like on the order ID where it would say this is invalid because it's already completed uh, and that that works so you can't uh, it it prevents you from saving that works uh, but I'm more of the mind I want to prevent people from getting to that form in the first place so there is a way to do this um, but it requires a few steps and so I'm gonna go through go through those here really quick hopefully really quick uh, so the first thing we need to do is we have to uh, hide this system action here now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to completely remove this add button here and not put anything else in its place. I'm going to put the ability to add order details as a button up here. Maybe I'll put it so it floats up here as like a giant plus, maybe. Uh, I don't know. So, but you won't be able to do it down here at all. So, but in doing that, we're going to then be able to hide that add button when this order goes to complete or if it's canceled basically whenever it's not open um, and so we can do that if we create our own action right so we have to hide this one we have to create our own action and then we can put a restriction on it so let's do that so what I've done is I've copied this order capture sample app as a starting point if you want to follow along um, and so here what we need to do first is if we look with the hide the add button so it's in behavior and it's on the order details table and it's this system generated add button so we can easily just do not display and you can see it goes away uh, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add our own action and uh, in the thread uh, there was some some of the earlier comments were uh, if you know if I just make a copy of the thing it puts it right back into the uh, little ad the original place here and so Lexi was saying you have to create your own deep link action with the option go to another view and then Josh Klassen had asked you know how can I do that and Alexi linked to this article here here's how you do that Josh right here so you have to create your own action. Um, just give it a name. I'm going to say new order details. And then the for the do this, it's not the add a new row to this table. It's go to another view within this app. And what we're going to use is the link to form function. So first, let's find the name of the form that we need to go to. So if we go to UX, it's the order details form. And so if I if we look, it's order space details underscore form. If I just scroll down here, I can get it inside this little part quickly. I'll copy this. And um, I'm going to open up a text thing here. And so it's link to form. And then we pass it 
the form. And now the, the cool thing with link to form is that we can then further pass along um, variables. So we can say, if we go and look at the columns of the order details, we can say set the order ID, the reference column. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my thing. We put this in double quotes. We say set this to, and then we'll put a space. And I'm going to copy all of this and go back to my action because now I can insert it here. Because now what I need to do is I need to say from the columns, set this to the order ID because so the action that we're creating is on the orders table to create to link into the order the order details form and so we're passing along what order it is and we so since we're on the order table level right all of our column references down here are the are the order and so we can easily grab the order id and so we can just hit insert you can see it goes in there and then i'm going to close my link to form wait for it and here we go so what we're saying is go to the form order details form and set the order id to whatever column whatever value is inside the order id column for this order and so we we'll give this some personalization. Let's see, new order detail. We'll make this a plus. And yep, yep, yep. We'll just do that and save it so that we can see what it looks like when it comes back. Still with me? Okay, if we look at one of our open orders, we can see we have a new action, new order detail. And when we click on it, okay, we have an error. Let's try and refresh the page. Is there something wrong with? No, that should be right. Oh, my bad. I forgot a comma. It doesn't know what to do. This is where splitting things up on on different levels kind of kind of bit me in the butt. My bad. Don't forget your commas. Proof. Just one stupid little thing off. <laughs> it just kind of messes everything up. All right. Now if we try it. There we go. We see it works. It jumps. It dumps it right into the appropriate order and then we can fill out the product ID the quantity and it will calculate the total um, I'm gonna pause really quick I'm gonna do some housekeeping this order details ID I'm gonna hide this uh, this is the it's the key um, now obviously we need to be able to see this order ID later but when you're creating the um, order details we don't need to see the order detail ID we don't not at the moment uh, so I'm gonna go in here and set this to false that will hide this and then since we're automatically setting this and I don't want people to be able to come in here and change what this order ID reference is for I'm I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to come in here and we're going to set this to false. So what this is going to do, uh, if I check one of the options, is apply show ifs constantly. I like to turn that off because that gives me a little more fine control over when things are visible. By doing what I've just done, um, the those fields won't be visible in the form as I'll show you here, they're not visible here. Um, so if we just look, okay, so there's 
four things. I'm going to create a new thing. I'm going to add five fifty thousand apples. And so now, if we look, uh, it's probably this one. Yeah, fifty thousand apples. Um, we can you can see the order detail ID is here. The order ID is visible here, but when you're inside the form, they're not because we don't need to see those. They're just kind of getting in the way. And to be honest, if you give people the ability to modify the order ID, it can cause dis, disassociation problems. People mm, accidentally change that. And they don't realize that they did that and they save it. And so then somebody else's order automatically has this new thing on it. Anyways, back to what we were doing. So that's the answer Josh's uh, question. That's how you do that, Josh. <coughs> so you see it's not down here. Now it's up here. Um, and we can actually move that um, where you could put it on the overlay and it'll float above here. That's kind of nice. I kind of like that, but you don't get the, you don't get the, the words, the words that tell you what it is. So I'm going to put a duplicate. So I just made a copy of this one. Uh, and I'm going to put that prominently. So now people will see the plus up here with the words, new order detail. But then if they're down here, they don't have to scroll back up here to the top to get to a new one. They can just right there real quick. Cool. So let's save all of this. Okay. So then that's how you do that. Now back to the original point that started this whole thing. Now that we're 12 minutes in. Basically, I want to be able to add records to the child table only if the parent record has the active status. Otherwise, the new button should not appear. So now that we've taken over this uh, add button down here and replaced it with our own new plus buttons, new system here, um, since these are separate actions, they're their own thing, uh, we can put... A condition on them now since these since actions run dependent upon the row that they're that you're viewing right so when I push this complete button it's specific to this order whereas the new the new button that's typically visible down here is not row specific you see what I'm saying? It's a table specific that you're saying. You're, you're, it's like you're pinging the table saying, hey, make a new thing with this, with this order. Um, but now that we've created our own actions, we can, these are row specific. And so we can put in um, our own formulas in here where we can do something like, wait a minute. didn't want to load okay come on guys <laughs> where's all this stuff down here where the order status I can just grab it from here let's see all right we'll just do this the right way where the order order status okay I'm gonna go back to my text thing um, where my order status equals and let's see what the options are for here open complete canceled so we only want them to do it when it's open we'll put that there I'm going to copy that and then we'll go back to that action and we'll put it down here. Oh, here they are. Here they are. Now they, now they showed up. So when the order status equals open and then I'm going to leave a, so, so now since we have two, since I have the floaty one, and just the regular one. So the regular one is the one that I've put this condition upon. So when it comes back and I, let's see, there should be, a, there should be a way to view 
completed or canceled. So if we find here, all right, so if we go to here, open, we can see this is here, the floaty one's there. If I complete it, okay, the floaty one disappeared along with the other actions as well. But you can see the, the one that I haven't modified yet is still floating, the, floating there. Um, so if we go to our, this guy, and we'll put our formula, our formula there, status equals open. That is how you can do what you were wanting to do here, David Joyce, where you can, where you can, um, oh, I just got an email confirmation from this app. <laughs> about my order come from my order being completed oh that's funny <laughs> that's <is> too funny <laughs> so now when this comes back uh everything should be done now now we have the ability to only create order details when something is open. When I go and I look at, where was that, Carol Klein? Yep, when I look at a completed one, I don't have any of those options. So there you go, David, Josh, hope I answered your questions. Sorry, this got a little long, kind of get away from me sometimes, but um, that's what table of contents and links are for. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you have any other questions.